Hello everyone, welcome back to another video as part of my term with Graphic45 as a brand ambassador for 2023-24. And you may have already seen me uh, do a video on how I made this cover for the tag book. So today, you're going to see me fill this tag book. Now, if you've seen my unboxing video, you'll have noticed that I ordered quite a few of these, the large black tag. And they come in pack six, but there's only one left here at the moment, and a loop ring. But the thing was, I don't actually have the die to do this. The reason for that was I had this idea in my head because I already had this die, which is the regular tag die, which comes down to there. And I thought, is there a way of making an album where I can use the tags as the pages? And I gotta say, when you've got one of those projects in your head and it turns out exactly what you thought it was going to be, this was it. So this one was done with Life's a Bowl of Cherries and I'll uh, do a little walkthrough of that. So keep have a look on the channels and um, I'll do a little walkthrough so you can see that in more detail. But this time, as I said, I've already started and you should have seen this video already, the mixed media cover, which is empty inside. Now, if you haven't seen that video, but you want to make one of these, you need to make a cover, which is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And let me grab my scoreboard for to measure the spine. The spine is one and three quarters. And then it's up to you. You've all probably got your own method that you like to make your covers. I like the tape method. Some people prefer to cover it in cardstock or in your Graphic 45 even. So it's up to you then. So make your cover and set it aside. So what we're going to do in this video is fill in the insides. So we're going to start off with creating our spine mounts. So to make these, I've cut two pieces of cardstock. Both of them are four and a quarter tall. The smaller one is two and a quarter, and the larger one is two and three quarters. Now, I'd be glad to know there's not much measuring things in this. There's no cutting guide or anything, because this is pretty much all the cutting you're going to be doing. So with the short edge on top, we're going to score at half and one. I'm going to turn it around half and one. And you'll have just this little thin bit in the middle, which is a quarter of an inch. That's your spine gusset. And with this wider one, we're going to do exactly the same. One, a half and one. Turn it around half and one. So this is the wider one. Now with this one, I'm just going to mark at one and a quarter and one and a half. And flip it over, I'm going to do it again, one and a quarter and one and a half. But that is going to just give me a place to line up this middle one. So because we've got two score lines, this means we've got a flexi hinge. And you'll see that the pages, so there's the first score line, there's the second one, they flip. So the first thing we're going to do today is make our pages. Now the album has got six pages in it which means we're going to need six tags. And luckily enough, that's what you get in your pack. So I've got the long six long tags. 
And I've got one left because I've already made five of them here. And the great thing about using the regular tag die is, if I just grab a piece of 12 by 12, you are able to get six of these out of the page nicely. So you just cut it at six inches in half and a strips of four and four, and then you just cut them out. So two sheets of 12 by 12 will cover all your pages for this album. If you have got a directional paper though, because a lot of these have got text, you need to make sure you cut one this way and one this way to make it work. Because all the pages pretty much come in pairs with me. So I'll put that aside. So let's have a look at the ones I've prepared already. So this would be my front. So when you open your album cover, this will be the front one. So that hasn't got a pair, but what I've done is yeah, I've used that for the last um, page at the end. So when you open it up, one of your four by 12 strips covers all the way across. Now I've used some photo slot dies by Cool Cats because they fit three by four photos nicely and they fit onto these tags. But you can see this paper is one long piece and then I've just flipped the bit I cut off onto there. And then on the full pages, I can fit my six, uh, three by four photo, but I can also fit three by four photos into the pockets. And then, I've just carried on using more papers, more six by four strips. So you can see that is that one just the other way around. So it's quite a cost effective way of decorating. See, that's the same, just the other way around. So this is as far as I've gotten. So this one needs decorating. So I'm gonna be decorating that for you in a second. And I'm gonna make a whole page from scratch. So let me put this piece of paper away and grab my trimmer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my tag and I'm gonna cut a piece off the bottom. And I'm going to cut it at three inches. So I'm just lining the bottom of my tag with the three inch line there and cutting. And then I'm just going to turn over. This is the front or what I consider to be the front because of the way the grommet is. So I'm going to attach this to the back. You could attach it to the front. It doesn't matter which way. It's up to you how you want to decorate yours. I'm using some um, artist framers tape. This is tape used by people who frame photographs and things. So it's quite a papery one. I get mine from uh, cool, cra cool Cats Crafts here in the UK that I know you can get some um, they've got a stockist in Canada so if you're in the US and you want to get some uh, Cool Cats tape then just look it up online and I'm just going to tape it here now if you haven't got any um, tape what you can do is take a one inch piece of cardstock, score it down the middle at half an inch, fold it over and then glue it so that the V is on the outside and these are called construction strips so you can just do it like that. So if you haven't got the tape, don't panic, there are ways around it. I'm just going to tape up the other side. I 
and just line it up. So what that means is we now have the tag front, which fits our regular tag die. And when we flip it over, we've got a pocket and an open end. So this open end then is able to slide onto our spine later on. So it's like making a pocket page in an album. So that's going to be the front. So I'm just going to ink some black soot distress ink around the edge. So that's all I've done here is I've cut a regular tag die with the loop onto the right. Make sure the other one's on the left to cover the other side. And oh, I couldn't find my glue there. We're just going to glue this on. Now I've used, I said, the three by four inch photo slots by Cool Cats there. So I've put in the photo mat just so I know where to avoid putting the glue. So that's what those green bits are. If you haven't got those dies or anything similar, you can just put a little photo mat on it or just leave it plain. And there we go. So that's as easy as it is to decorate those tags. And the way it fits around the grommet and everything, there's absolutely no work to do at all. So now what I've done on this side is just cut off the bottom of this tag die. So these pages have been cut at two and three quarters. So I'm going to take this tag, which matches the bottom of my, uh, sorry, the right hand side. And I'm going to cut two and three quarters off the bottom. And again, just ink it around. And then with this one, you could just put it on like that, but then the curves are the wrong side. So I flip it over. So this is why I've got text on this one, so I've got to be careful that I've cut it with the grommet side to the left on this one. So that's all I'm going to do now. Is decorate. So I'm going to open up this tag or the pocket and put it down. Now, I did notice when you get die cut, you get a little edge which is sort of beveled, which sticks up. So I'm going to iron out that bevel before I inked. Did I do it? I can't remember. I might have done it and just not told you why I was doing it. Just gives you a smoother finish. So I just used a bone folder and did that. And now, I've got that side as well. So now those two pages sort of match and tie in with each other. We've got one more to do here. I said this is going to match that front page. So I'm going to cut two and three quarters from the bottom edge. Iron out that bevel, which is in the wrong direction now because I'm using the back. just as I did before, we're going to glue this in place just by opening that pocket and placing it down and then oh, 
on this side as well. A bit excessive with the glue. And here we go. We now have our six pages. All in one, two, three, four, five, six. I thought there was one missing. Six pages. So the next step now is to do the spines. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard and trimmer. I'll be right back. So of course now we need something to attach our pages to, so we're going to be making our spine. And for this, I've gone for the stacked flexi hinge, which is my go-to method. So normally when you have a page, you slide it onto the spine, right to the base. But with the flexi one, there's an extra score line, which means they actually flex there. So it's like a two point of flexi, which means they lie flatter especially when they're stacked on top of each other like that. And also it gives you a bit of leeway because they move up and down as well. So if you've struggled with spines before, this might be the one for you. Now for the height of my spines, I wanted to go just a tiny bit less than the height of my tag or the width, if it's um, the usual way around, we're using a landscape. So my tag is three and seven eighths, which is just back from four, which means with this, I've come back one, two, three sixteenths from four. That's easy. <laughs> Otherwise it's uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 sixteenths. Sounds a bit more awkward. I'll show you how I did it. So my scoreboard's got, uh, my trimmer's got sixteenths of an inch on it. So there's four. I'm just going back one, two, three sixteenths. So three of the tiniest little ones. So there's my four inch. One, two, three. So that is how I did it. Oh, that's the middle one. And then We've got our central um, U-shape spine, which is one and a quarter. We've got the middle one then, which is, sorry, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, and the largest one is two and three quarters. And each of these are gonna be scored the same. We score at one inch, a half an inch, I'm getting my measurements all wrong today, half an inch and three quarters of an inch. And then I flip it round and repeat. Half and three quarters. So that, that gives me, can you see the score lines? The two center ones come up to make my spine. And then the two outer ones create sort of a wing, which means it flexes on that position there. And we're going to do exactly the same on each of them. So half and three quarters, flip half and three quarters. Now this one, once it's in that U shape, it's going to go in the center there. So what I can do is squat one and one and a quarter, one, one and a quarter. That's just going to sort of give me a guideline so I can line them up straight. Same on this one, so one, and one and a quarter and dash up one and here one two that's where my one would be and again so mark at one so there's my score line come across two of those score lines and just mark there and that's where that middle one's going to fit so now we're going to just score whichever the two inside ones up to make our U shapes. So the two inside ones. So you can see how they're going to stack, which is why we call it the stacked method. And my smallest one. So those are U shaped ones, but now we also want to 
from the outer ones in the opposite direction. Creating that shape. Oops. Plain dominoes here. And the last one. So one, two, three. Some nice strong tape here. Now our first one is quite slim. So I'm gonna cut some of my tape down the middle. And placing it on the bottom of my U shape. And here now, I should be able to just use my tape and get two layers on. So in between those two score lines, on this one, I should be able to get plenty of tape. Now this is the one that attaches to my grey board, so I'm definitely going to be adding three. And then on the front, we're going to add tape to each of our wings. So one, two, So that's our spines now taped up. A little extra hint you can do is you can trim off a little V-shape from your wings. What that'll do is make your pages or your tag pages slide on easily because instead of trying to fit edge to edge with that straight edge to straight edge, you're sort of gradually sliding on because you've got that V shape. It's getting wider and wider until you get to that point. So you're just cutting off up to that score line. There we go. We've now got our three pieces ready to go. I am going to add some tape, uh, some glue on top of the tape as well. That's just going to help me with some wiggle room. Because if I just put this down now, I'd have one go at it. By adding some of the glue, I can sort of wiggle it into place. So I'm using that score line there and the score line there. But when the glue dries, it's also going to add some extra strength to my spine. So I've lined that up. And now I'm going to do exactly the same. And line up my middle one. Between those two notches that I created, my guideline. I mean, you could just eyeball it if you're confident enough. I'm just particular with my measurements. There we go. And there you go, you've created your stacked flexi hinge. So you've got places for six pages with a quarter of an inch in between each one. So I just want that to dry a little bit. So I'm going to attach it. To the inside of my album. That's a bit awkward because I did a 3D one there. So I'm lining it up 
right bang in the middle of that spine section with a little space on top and bottom and trying to make it even left and right as well. It seems to have come nicely together there. So let's set it aside to dry. Oh, actually, I haven't got time to make it dry. We're ready to go. Now, if I hadn't had to be doing the mixed meat thing, I probably would have done the cover second because it is now um, 3D and lifted. So that's all I'm doing now is flicking my pages to the back first. So I'm always start, I don't know why I start on the back page because then when I lay the next one on, I can see where it's going. Making sure we've got our page the right way. I've taken the tape off and put some glue on just so my page doesn't try and stick straight away. And I've also added a strip of glue to the back just to seal that side as well. So I'm opening up my pocket, I'm sliding it on, and I'm stopping just before I get to that score line. And it's as simple as that. Then I bring my next page, take off the tape. Remember to add a bit of bead of glue to the back as well. Otherwise you've got a pocket which is open. Slide on. And the third one. Exactly the same, but we're working on the other side this time. So you can see the glued side. I thought I hadn't opened it up. There we go. Just stop in just shy of that score line. So if I went onto that score line, I'd get rid of that flexi bit. And the whole flexi hinge would have been a bit pointless. So we just about see that score line. There we go. We now have our six pages in place. And what you can do then is you can add whatever embellishments you want. You could tie some. I've got the classic ivory linen here. And because I've got that distress spray, I'm sure I could maybe tie this in with the green, I don't know. You could add some That's the good. and just carry on then Tying some ribbon and fish tail in them. So I didn't do that on my first one, but just to show you that you could. So there's just one thing left to do, and that is to decorate our inside covers. And of course, you can do whatever you want there, but I'm going to show you now how I make my pockets um, and show you how you can make this to adapt to any of your um, stripped border ones from your papers. 
So now I'm going to show you how to utilize your papers with these long border strips for your pockets on your inside cover. So you can see the front and back exactly the same. The height of this pocket will depend on uh, the height of the border you decide to use. So that's why I haven't given measurements for these pockets, but I'm going to show you how to work out the measurements. So our album is six and a quarter wide. To make a pocket, you need half an inch each side to wrap around to stick onto here. So that means I'm going to add half an inch this side and half an inch this side. So it's three and three quarters, seven. So our, our pockets are going to be seven and a quarters wide. So oh, I'm going to need to open it up and make it seven and a quarter. So that's the first thing we've done. That's going to be no matter what you do. Then you're going to measure your strip. So I'm going to use the bottom bit. So I could use up to the top of the grey and have it at one and a half. Let's have a look at what these were. Yeah, I think you need at least two inches. Otherwise, the pocket isn't deep enough for anything. So I'm going to include this green one as well. So let's have a look. Yeah, so that's two and a half inches. So for our pocket, our paper is going to be two and a half. To have a little black border, we add a quarter of an inch. So up to two and three quarters. And you also need a half inch to go on the bottom. So whatever height your border is, add three quarters of an inch. So it's two and a half, which means we're going to go to three and a quarter. So our pocket height is going to be three and a quarter. And three and a quarter. And then with our scoreboard, we're going to go half an inch down each of the sides and half an inch here across one of the long ones. Let's grab some nice strong tape and we're just going to tape between those score lines. So those who have been following my channel will know how I do this. We'll just go around those three edges and we're going to cut off those corners. So that's going to be our pocket and these are the flaps then to attach to our album. But of course, if we just folded them here, that corner is going to get in the way. So we're going to chop off that corner by going to that cross. Instead of going straight, I'm just going to flip it a little bit, which just means when they fold over, they're not going to meet and create unnecessary bulk. So to that score line, instead of going straight, just bend it a little bit. I'm going to do that on all four. There we go. And then just score them. And I'm going to flip it over and score them nice and flat. The sharper you can score these, the better, because the flatter your pocket is going to lie. So we'll bring back our album. So one pocket is going to go here. But you might see a little bit of the chipboard here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line. And the same with the back one. Yep, 
You could just use longer paper, but to save on paper, what I do is because I've got the black tape anyway, and I've used that to construct, it'll just hide some of the grey board. Let's just attach. I'm going to add some glue just because we're going on to the tape and grey board. Make sure I'm lined bottom left. In an ideal world, I would have done this before decorating the cover. <laughs> but the cover was my ambassador assignment. So it had to come first. This is the bonus video. There we go. So now we've got our two pockets added and this being a pole album you're going to see how all my measurements work now and how we're going to make the most out of our papers we're going to cut at four inches which means we've still got another eight inches here for another project we are going to cut off our borders at or is it two and a quarter we said? Nope, two and a half. And then we cut the papers in half at six inches. Flip this one over. What we've done is maximised our paper. I think I... Dropped my inking tool earlier. Of course, I got that. Yep, yeah, here it is. We're just going to ink these up. So these are deeper than my uh, Life's a Bowl of Cherries one, just because of where the border strips lie. Just do the size and the top of this one because that's going to tuck behind the pocket end, so you're not going to see it. So let's bring it in. If I... This is the moment of truth now. Have all my measurements worked? There it goes. Onto pocket now it looks a bit off that's because I've got my um, black tape once I put this in you see it's not as off it was the tape underneath that went off like that and then same on this side so that is then the basic construction of my tag book of course you can embellish it as you wish then especially on these pockets you can add more ephemera more photo slots whatever you want and you see the difference in pockets which is why I didn't give you the height measurements at the start that's how tall my life's a bowl of cherries one was that's how tall my PSA love you one is 
So there we go. This was one of those projects I had in mind from the very start. When I first found out I was going to be a brand ambassador, I really wanted to be using these tags. Um, again, a nice cost effective. I've worked out the measurements to make the most out of your papers. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see what you lot come up with and which uh, paper pads and collections you decide to use. So thank you for watching. Please leave some comments in the description below. I'd really like to uh, hear what you think of uh, this little album, uh, if you enjoyed it, and give it a little thumbs up if you did. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Mm -hmm.